Hello, and welcome back to my limited heel run of Pokemon Yellow. In the last episode, we took on Sprina's gym and fairly handily defeated her. I mean, um, we ran into a little bit of trouble with Alakazam, but, you know, when it came right down to it, Sleepy was just awesome. We were down with a Kinesis from that Kadabra, so we had our accuracy lowered one stage, and that Alakazam kept recovering. But you know what? Sleepy came in with the clutch with the Mega Punch crit and won us that battle. So anyway, in this episode, I already trained, like I said, um, from on the route from Fuchsia to Seafoam Islands, I've already trained on the trainers there. So we're going to fly with Charlie. We're gonna fly back to Pallet Town. And I guess I should mention, um, like I have one free heal in Sylph Cove still. I have one free heal from Mom here, but we're not going to use that. We're full up on tokens right now anyway. So we're going to go ahead and fight against some trainers today going south from Pallet Town to Cinnabar Island. And if we make it there in a timely manner, we might even check out some of Cinnabar Mansion. Probably won't complete it. But, you know, maybe we'll get started on it. Depending on how many of these frivolous wild encounters we have here. We are leading with Dino Bunny, maybe not the best against a lot of water trainers, but Dino Bunny needs some attention, you know? He was leading the pack for the longest time, and he's fallen so much behind. We have uh, Sleepy and Charlie leading the pack now. I want to catch up Dino Bunny, because, you know, he can still come in handy for us. And good, we're facing a Seeking. Seeking don't tend to know many water-type attacks. I think Seeking was the only Pokemon to learn, uh, what is it? to learn Waterfall by level up before it was even an HM. But, um, I, I don't know if it's still- I guess it still wouldn't. Well, actually, because I'm trying to think, Pokemon that learn HMs by level up, when- I mean, in Generation 1, of course, Waterfall was, um, not an HM yet. But, you have, I think it's Salamence, if you- if you evolve Shellgon into Salamence as early as possible, level 55, I think he learns Fly natively. I know he did in Generation 3 when he was first introduced, which you have an interesting thing there, and I, I'm not sure if any other Pokemon, like if any Pokemon learn Whirlpool natively. I think ones that do might be in generations where Whirlpool isn't an HM. I don't know. I'm, I might not be remembering properly. Um, but... Learning HMs is a weird thing, like if you learn an HM by level up, because, okay, let's say you learn... Let's say you learn Fly by level up. I've never really tested this out. Can you then not delete Fly, even though you didn't teach it via HM? I've never tried that before, but that's always kind of weird when you think about Pokemon, like, if you, if you were to go into the quote-unquote real Pokemon world and a Pokemon learning an HM move. Oh, cool, we got the Paralysis. That kind of goes back to my whole thing. In one of my sweet vlogs, I mentioned in hopes for Pokemon Sun and Moon. This was something that I didn't think should happen, or that I didn't think would happen. But since everybody had their own opinion of what, what should be done about HMs or what should replace the HMs, I kind of said that just, like, just about any water type Pokemon should be able to ferry you across the water. Like, you don't, you shouldn't have to teach an HM move that you can't forget, except by you know, going to a move deleter, but you should have Pokemon that have just the inherent ability, like, like, let's take Dino Bunny. Dino Bunny's a Pokemon that can learn Strength, learn Surf, but instead of teaching those moves, you should just have a Nidoking and be able to use it to move boulders. Or somebody commented on the video too, I think, um, also would be pretty cool, like, uh, what attack was it? Okay, like, Cut. So you should be able to take a Pokemon that knows Slash, Fury Cutter, um, Night Slash, X scissor. So basically any cutting or slashing type of move should be able to substitute for cut. And that would allow you to essentially not have to rely on one HM move and kind of have one move slot devoted to an unforgettable move and just allow Pokemon um just allow the Pokemon to use their natural abilities, attacks that they would learn anyway, but that would be more useful. I mean, with, with attacks like Surf, okay. Surf actually is a decent move, and Strength is a decent normal-type move, so, I mean, not every HM is a terrible move. 
But it would be cool to be able to do different, like, be able to have different moves that do the same thing. Because think about, okay, like, for example, I'm a, a notorious example. Zangoose can't learn cut. And Zangoose has claws, and it learns slash, and it can learn, like, X scissor or whatever. But it can't learn cut. But in the real world, you would think a Zangoose could probably cut down a little bush, right? So have it have slash or X scissor or whatever qualify as being able to cut down bushes. I, I agree with that. I kind of like that. I guess it would kind of defeat the purpose of HMs, but that is kind of the point that we're talking about at this point, too. We're, we're trying to say, I guess, that HMs are a bit of an outdated RPG mechanic that have kind of outlived their usefulness. But I don't see... I, I think HMs are here to stay because they're part of the basic Pokemon formula. They could probably stand to do... I guess black and white might have been the best generation as far as not being too copious with the required HMs. And the, the precedent started in Generation 5 where if you move a Strength Boulder into a little hole, you just have to move it once, and then you're done. Those types of things, those were some good precedent sets. So I, I do think there has been some thought into making HMs less of a, of a bother, less of an inconvenience. Although Generation 6 did kind of bring back a lot of annoying reliance on HMs, especially getting through... Um, Getting through Victory Road was kind of annoying. But, again, the whole strength thing, I do like that you can use it once and then you're done if you complete the strength puzzles or whatever. Okay, so we got this Seedra here. Uh, let's go for a Seismic Toss. Okay, Seedra is down. Banana's getting some XP here. Ooh, we've got a Tentacruel. All right, that's gonna be a bit bulkier on the special side, but we're gonna go at it with Pikachu anyway, because pretty much all we, the only other thing we could use against it is Sleepy, and Sleepy has gotten so much attention right now. We're gonna give, ooh, -hoo, Banana a try. Okay, um, yeah, that high special. Let's see. I did buy some Hyper Potions. Oh, I should move these up, actually. As long as I'm here. I want to replace it with... Here... Is that no... Yeah, there we go. Yeah, we'll use one Hyper Potion. Make it easier. Because I want to make sure we can live two of these. Because that Thunderbolt... Oh, it went for Wrap. You lovely little Tentacruel. What I wanted to say was I wanted to make sure, because that Thunderbolt looks like it's in two-hit KO range, but... I, I just wanted to be sure. And yeah, see how it just barely didn't knock it out? That's what I was worried about. Alright, so let's just finish this thing off with a quick attack. Done and done. And Banana grew to level 37! Cool, cool. We defeated Swimmer. All right, what's wrong with me swimming? What is wrong with you swimming? I don't know, I didn't have a problem with it. I just, oh, oh, I, I see what's wrong with you swimming. It's cause you're a cue ball and you look in no way appropriately dressed for swimming. I get it now. Critical hit. I don't know if we needed that critical hit. Dino Bunny grew to level 37 also. Okay, we're catching up our neglected Pokemon here. We need to make sure Bulby doesn't get left out of things either, though. Although, well, we, we really need to do a lot of training. Well, when we get to Cinnabar, when we do Cinnabar Mansion, we're going to be doing a lot of training for Shades. Because quite honestly, Shades is going to have to catch up by a lot of levels. Blaine's Pokemon are in the 50s. We're probably gonna have to do a decent amount of training. I might have to use uh, more than one. I might have to use more than one token in preparing for this, which is not the end of the world. We have plenty of tokens, and like I said, I've been giving myself three tokens for every gym battle, which again might be kind of easy. But you know, I think what we should do is go back, like when the series is over, kind of go back and tally the amount of tokens I actually used 
versus the amount of tokens I could have potentially earned. And we'll see that if I didn't use that many, that means I, I did a pretty good job. It means that maybe I could make a challenge where I don't give myself as many tokens available to me, but still, if I did it and was able to really limit the amount of times that I used... I did not mean to hit Rock Slide. But if, if, even if I had more tokens available, if I was able to do it on a much lower amount of tokens, that should still be kind of a bonus, right? That means I, I did a good job. But it does mean, like, for the next challenge, maybe I could make it a little bit harder. But once again, I'll repeat again, just for the benefit of everybody, in case you, you missed the first episode. I want this to be a fun thing. I want it to be a little bit challenging, so it's not your run-of-the-mill playthrough. But I did not want it to be this ridiculous thing where I was going to be constantly worried about if I was going to lose. Because I want to make it to the end of this game, and we're getting pretty close. Just got two more gym battles, and Victory Road and the Elite Four. So there might be, like, what, four or so more episodes? Oh, that reminds me. I need to, well, let me pull up my calendar for a second. Okay, so, the day I'm recording this is a Tuesday, it's July 19th, the previous episode of Pokemon Yellow should be going up um, the next day, the 20th, or, well, by the time this is up, it'll have already been up, it went up the 20th, I'm recording this on the 19th, this should go up on the 25th, July 25th. Um, the Wednesday of that week, I'm going out of town. I will be out of town for a week and a half, and then I will be back. So, basically, I need to record one more episode of Pokemon Yellow, at least, as something to go up on the Monday that'll be away, which is August 1st. Which I will- I do think I will be able to do that. Now, I get back on August 7th, which is a Sunday. The question is, will I be able to have another episode of Pokemon Yellow up for the 8th? And I probably will not. So, and I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I will either probably skip the the 1st and do my early upload on the 8th, or I will just put it up on the 1st and, and take a break on the 8th, because I'll have been just coming back and still be, you know, jet lag. Probably I'll be taking the day off from everything entirely. So maybe I'll have time to record episodes for a future week, but I'll be pretty much... I'll probably be a little bit out of it and just resting. So anyway, what you... what you... Um, what you should take from this is... This should be going up on the 25th. So if you're watching this the day it comes out, you can expect probably an episode on the 1st next week. And then I'll probably take the 8th off and not have anything up that week. It'll either be that or the reverse, where I'll have nothing up the week of the first, and then I'll have, um, I'll have something on the eighth. But most likely the other way around. And, um, should get Dino Bunny out of here. We did get a crit, but no paralysis. Alright, let's get Bulby back out here. I need to make sure Bulby doesn't fall behind either. I wanted to use Bulby against Giovanni. I mean, between Bulby and Shades, they'll be a pretty good tag team. But... Bulby doesn't have a whole lot of Pokemon to tra train against in the meantime uh, before Giovanni. So actually, I should be training Bulby against more of these Water-type trainers. But it's alright, we don't have- we, we have not only this route, but we have the route in between Cinnabar Island and the Seafoam Islands still. So we can get some training done there. Too bad the wild Pokemon here, there aren't better wild Pokemon to train against. We have mostly Tentacool, which the higher level ones, Bulby can't necessarily one-shot because of their high special and the fact that grass is neutral to them. But, it's something. It's something to train on. I mean, actually, I should go, when, I, when I'm ready to train Bulby, I should just go, and, and um, Banana for that matter, I should just go into Seafoam Island and train on the wild Pokemon there. Probably won't train on the legendary birds. Oh, but that is another thing. I could train... Um, if I'm ever at a loss, if I want to level up Dino Bunny some more, I could train in the power plant, actually. I keep that in mind. Because I do have, like I said, really as far as actual gameplay episodes, I don't have too many of these left, because I want... The episode after this, I'll probably do, uh, Cinnabar Island Gym. 
and then I'll do some more off-screen training. I will probably, depending on how long that takes, I'll probably go straight to Giovanni's gym. And then, um, I'll have just an episode for Victory Road, probably, and an episode for the Elite Four, um, with a bunch of training in between. So, yeah. Hmm. So, so yeah, I mean, I could do some filler episodes and explore Seafoam Island and the power plant as sort of bonus episodes, and it can kind of be a two-for-one, like I can get some training accomplished and add a couple of filler episodes just for fun. I mean, unless you guys don't want to bother seeing those filler episodes, because I know in a lot of cases, I know I was better about this earlier in the series, where I would just cut out stuff, miscellaneous stuff, um, when I'm exploring dungeons, like I cut out a lot of Mount Moon and things like that. But I've really gotten more, um, I guess rambly might be the word. I don't, I, I hope it's not, um, it doesn't seem like a negative thing like that. But I've more kept my, my conversation going throughout the whole episode. And so it's been harder for me to just cut things. Um, so, but I, but I have tried to cut out a lot of mis miscellaneous stuff. But if you guys would like to see episodes on the power plant and on Tifa Islands, I, I'm probably going to go there for training anyway. We can fight the legendary birds. Um, we could try to catch them, or we could just fight them for experience, since that might be more useful. I mean, actually, I guess the most useful thing we could we could just uh, have them. Um, we we could catch them and have these level 50 Pokemon to help us out. That actually might be more useful. But I feel like. I don't want to need to use those legendaries. I want to have these. I want to use my team that I've had pretty much this whole time. Which, uh, speaking of which, we're here in Cinnabar Island. Yeah. So we're gonna go straight into Cinnabar Mansion. We have a few minutes before uh, before we reach about the time when I want to call things quits. And um, I'm gonna have to be careful while I'm talking here. That I don't get lost. Not that this place- this place is not that big, it's not that easy to get lost in or anything, but... Uh, y you still have to pay attention a little bit to where you're hitting the switches and things like that. So, I'm gonna try to pay some attention here. Again, I could cut some stuff out. But we're gonna see- we're gonna see how that goes, because again, we only have a few minutes left. I probably won't cut out a whole lot, I'll just do a little preliminary exploring. The, the first part of this, of the Cinnabar Mansion, I know fairly well, so I shouldn't get too lost here. We've got, you know, Grimer and Muck and Rattata and Raticate and Growlithe. Can we find Vulpix in here also? I mean, I know we can find vo both Vulpix and Growlithe. What are these doing here, anyway? I guess this is supposed to be a mansion. One thing I never understood, though, this is supposed to be a mansion, and there's all this, like... Uh, checkerboard kitchen tile. Okay, I said I knew the p first part of Cinnabar Mansion pretty well, and I just did something wrong. So, there's that. We're gonna try to keep going. Uh, you can find Ditto. Is it in Pokemon Yellow? Only where you can find Ditto in Cinnabar Mansion? That leads into the whole theory of Ditto being f a failed clone of Mew. Which... That's a theory where I don't know, I honestly don't know if it's true, because a lot of these theories, I think they're, they're pretty good coincidences. Of course I can't escape from Eradicate. I might as well try to take it on. Freaking crit hyperfang. Um, there's a lot of, there, there are a lot of those Pokemon theories, you know, like the, 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 uh, similarities between Ghastly and Cloyster, or Ghastly and Voltorb, or whatever. Um, Voltorb being a ghastly possessing a Pokeball. Like, those are all kind of cool theories where there's a lot of pretty convincing coincidences involved, but at the same time, I, I'm very, very, very skeptical that these were, this was the intent of Game Freak at all, or even crossed their mind. I'm pretty skeptical of that. But, on the other hand, the, the whole idea of Ditto being a failed clone of Mew, I mean, let's go over the evidence that they always point out. Both Ditto and Mew are the only two Pokemon who can learn Transform by level up. Ditto and Mew have similar, very close to the same color palette in both their normal and shiny form. Their normal being pink 
or in Ditto's case, like a pinkish purple, and their shiny form being a very similar shade of blue. Okay, I messed something up here. Because I closed myself off. Oh, no, I know what I messed up. It's because I'm not supposed to do this floor first. I'm supposed to go to a different floor. So it really has been a while. But okay, so the, the Ditto and Mew theory. Um, oh, what are they? The same height and weight, right? I think they are, or like very close. Um, so we have transform. I did not mean to usurp again. Transform, color palette, same size. You can find uh, Ditto in Cinnabar Mansion. Which is, of course, has all these notes about the creation of Mewtwo, and I guess in the video game canon, it can be led to believe that is the location where the Mew experiments that created Mewtwo were undertaken. Um, and also the fact that their base stats follow a similar pattern. Mew has straight 100 across the board. I think Ditto has, I don't know, 40 or 45 straight across the board. So it would it would lend credence to the idea that. Ditto was- they were attempting to copy Mew, but all they ended up doing was create a literally cheap imitation. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe it wasn't intentional. Um, what was it? The other place where you can find Ditto, I think, is Cerulean Cave, which is where Mewtwo is, of course, where you find Mewtwo. Aw, Growlithe. I love Growlithe. It's so cute. I think I, I mentioned this before, but Growlithe and Vulpix have great sprites in Pokemon Yellow. Like, the Growlithe's Pokemon Yellow Sprite is one of my favorite versions of its sprite, to be honest. Okay, so yeah, we're supposed to go up this way. Do I want to do a little bit of work? Well, yeah, let's, let's fight this guy. There's all these burglars here. Of course, we have the other sort of controversies about, uh, about Cinnabar Mansion being... The mention of real-world location, South America, and the mention of Mew giving birth, which is... is not the way that it is appeared, it, that it appears to be in, like, the anime, for example. Or in every other depiction of Mew being created, it's always sort of Mewtwo, of Mewtwo being created. It's always Mewtwo in this sort of test tube thing, and he's being formed that way. Which, I need to... I am not totally sure, like, when you think of Dolly the Sheep, and you think of actual animal cloning, do they... Do they insert the clone DNA, like the embryo or whatever you want to... I guess whatever it is, into a real animal so that it, it can give live birth? Like Dolly the Sheep, do they put the... Um... The original sheep's DNA or whatever, like fertilize the egg or whatever, and put it into the actual sh original sheep so that the sheep could give birth to the clone sheep, or was it an actual test tube incubated sheep? I mean, I guess that would be something I could look up easily. But I, I guess that's what the reference of Mew giving birth is about. But the interesting thing is, of course, that would meant that would imply if they had Mew there and Mew was able to give birth to Mewtwo, that would imply that these researchers somehow obtained a Mew, I guess captured it. So this elusive Mew, were they did they have it and then like when Mewtwo destroyed the mansion, Mew escaped? Is that what the lore is supposed to be in the games? It's not quite clear. Um, of course, I would I would say the reason that real world locations are mentioned in the especially in the original Pokemon games is because it was a new intellectual property at the time. It was kind of supposed to parallel the real world. I mean, we already know that Pokemon regions parallel locations in the real world anyway, but. Um, it, I think this was more at, at the original inception of the Pokemon games. It, Pokemon were kind of meant to be these extra powerful, like the, the the whole theme of the first generation has to do with genetic mutation. I mean, and the the fact of all the stuff with Mewtwo and Ditto and and even Eevee, like there a lot of Pokemon and Voltorb even they all seem like these um, these genetic experiments and a lot of 
Pokemon from this generation seem to especially be genetic experiments of some kind. Um, look, South America, right there. So, I guess they said- Whoa, that was creepy. We ran into a Pokemon- That would've been- That would've been hilarious if they- if they were programmed to like, Oh, you ran into Mew when you read that diary entry. But yeah, so it does appear that the researchers discovered and I guess temporarily captured Mew for the purposes of experimentation. Anyway, is this where we came from? No, it's not. Um. Anyway. The real world location. So I think originally Pokemon was kind of meant to be even more of a parallel of of our real world than it already than it currently is. Like hold on, let me see. Who do I wanna Yeah, let's just keep boosting up Pikachu because Pikachu is faring the worst stat wise because he's not able to evolve. Um I think I'm gonna have to call up the episode here anyway. But yeah, I do think that Pokemon started off as like, there there were other animals, real world animals, and there were... It was intended to be more like a, a real world setting. Loosely based off, I mean, you have things like Lieutenant Surge is the Lightning American, you have the mention of South America, um, things like that. And you have the references to real-world animals. Now, there are still references to real-world real animals in later games. In Fire Red, I guess it mentions something like Raichu being able to shock an Indian elephant or something like that. So there are still comparisons. Even just the, the Pokedex, the species description of Pokemon being like the mouse Pokemon, the puppy Pokemon. So there are still comparisons to real-world animals. But I do think that originally Pokemon wasn't supposed to be sort of its self-contained world. Like, now- nowadays, the Pokémon world is kind of established as the Pokémon are the animals of the world, and other animals either don't exist anymore, or are very few in number. But I do think starting out, there- it was intended that there would be real- real-world animals in addition to Pokémon, just like in the overall canon of the games, but I don't think it's that way anymore. So it's one of those cases of something starting out, and then as it evolved, it, it sort of became its own self-contained world. Anyway, that's enough of my ramblings for now. We, we probably are about halfway through Cinnabar Mansion, but we're gonna do more of that in the next episode, I guess. Um, actually, what I might do off-screen is I'll do some more training Without going any further in Cinnabar Mansion, I'll do some more training and probably use a token at the beginning of the next episode so we can finish Cinnabar Mansion and still be ready to take on Blaine. Um, because I don't want to just do Cinnabar Mansion and then, well, I have nothing else to do but train. So that'll probably be what I do. Um, I have to see how that all times out with, with um, my schedule getting my episodes head, ev head, uh, ready ahead of time. Because otherwise, maybe I'll just finish Cinnabar Mansion and then do Seafoam Islands or something. But anyway, let me know what you guys think. I'll probably have it recorded before then anyway. But just in case, let me know what you think. Alright guys, if you like this video, go ahead and leave a like. Leave comments as always. Also, subscribe if you haven't already, because I do appreciate it. Also, if you'd like to follow me on social media, you can like my page on Facebook or follow me on Twitter. The links are in the description as always. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you on the next episode of my limited heel run of Pokemon Yellow.